to them, I just want to know, how do you think you're part of the solution when you're allowing yourself to be paid to be part of the problem? Looks like the apple doesn't fall too far from the influencer tree. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I am so glad to have you here with me again this week. If you are new here and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, so if you're into that type of thing or you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and make sure that you never miss another upload from me. All right. Today, I think we should finally talk about the Washington Post article that came out recently telling us that online influencer dietitians are being paid by large food companies to promote junk food to their platforms. And you guys, this article felt like nothing but validation to me. I have thought for a very long time that this was happening, um, but there just simply wasn't any evidence until now and i mean i've been thinking about this since i made my video on find food freedom when sammy was telling people to go out and get their trigger foods i want to know from you what is one food that you forbid yourself to eat and that actually scares you to keep inside your house i want to challenge you to go get that food this week take yourself out on a solo date or with a friend and go try your forbidden fear food but now we do have proof that these online dietitians are being paid by these junk food companies. And by proof, I mean more proof, because this runs deep. So let's get into it, but we're gonna start with the Washington Post article itself. This article is titled, The Food Industry Pays Influencer Dietitians to Shape Your Eating Habits. Registered dietitians are being paid to post videos that promote diet soda, sugar, and supplements on Instagram and TikTok. In the article, they talk about a recent study from The Who raising questions about aspartame, which is a very controversial artificial sweetener. Just as The Who's report was coming out, it was noted that dietitians were using hashtag safety of aspartame on their videos while telling their audiences that they should be wary of clickbait titles and low quality science. The article names three specific influencers who used this hashtag safety of aspartame. Steph Grasso, Cara Harbstreet, and Mary Ellen Phipps. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I take particular issue with these women who I call health at every size thinfluencers. Um, they are essentially, in my definition, um, influencer dietitians who promote um, intuitive eating and health at every size um, side by side without ever having experienced what it's like to live in a larger body, as they like to call it. They have never been overweight. They've never experienced binge eating disorder where they've gained 100 plus pounds, but they feel fully confident promoting health at every size to their audiences. So I needed to know, who were these women that were so confidently um, being paid by American Beverage Association? What did their platforms actually look like? And do they deserve the heat that they've been getting since this article came out? First, I looked up Steph Grasso, and a quick scroll of her page shows bright, colorful, mostly whole foods, with an occasional video sprinkled in about balancing some sort of processed food, like an Eggo waffle. In her aspartame video, I did note that she had the hashtag ad in the um, description, like she is supposed to um, by the guidelines, I think that the FTC sets, but it never said in the description who the ad was for. Next, I looked up Cara Harbstreet, and she had just a few things on her platform that really made me give her the side eye. Uh, because it was clear that she had fallen into a little bit of that health at every size promotion. Yes, there are many. But when I say many, I mean that there are many that are designed with an intrinsically fat phobic methodology that are looking at outcomes that are really positioned around how long can we sustain this temporary thinness resulting from a bariatric surgery. And once again, her aspartame specific video had the hashtag ad, but did not say who the ad was for in the video's description. 
Finally, I looked up Mary Ellen Phipps, um, also known as Milk Honey Nutrition on TikTok and Instagram. She also used the hashtag ad without saying who the ad was for, but to her credit, and she's the only one who did this, I have the screenshot. You can see at 11 weeks ago when she posted this, someone asked her immediately, who is the sponsor? Is it soda? They listed a few companies. And much to her credit, Mary Ellen did respond right away, you can see 11 weeks here in the screenshot, that it was being sponsored by the American Beverage Association. So at least she was honest when she was asked about it, and kudos to her audience member who flagged that right away and felt confident enough to ask. Love seeing that skepticism online. But I do find it weird, like why wouldn't you just put American Beverage Association in your description unless you were trying to be shady. And I'll be honest, I don't want to get too hung up on the aspartame specific arguments because aspartame is a very controversial ingredient. They have been going back and forth on its safety for as long as I can remember. But what I really want to focus in on with this article is these online dietitians being paid by lobbying organizations, lobbying food organizations, to create confusion in the online health and wellness spaces. When I finally um, had time to read through this article and then go back and script for this video, um, I went to TikTok to pull up Steph Grasso because, as I said, I needed to know what these women's platforms were. And it was at that point in time that I saw that she had made another TikTok doubling down on her decision to promote aspartame on her platform. I've seen the Washington Post article and I think it's finally time to share my side of the story. Yes, I partnered with the American Beverage Association. Disclosure and research are a priority in my field. The American Beverage Association, or ABA, is a trade association that represents America's non-alcoholic beverage industry. Not just soft drinks, but including water-based beverages, 100% fruit juices, teas, and sports drinks. I have specific criteria when it comes to my brand partnerships. One, I have to like their product and use it myself. Two, it should be something I think my audience will benefit from. And three, their messaging must be supported by evidence-based research. I partnered with the ABA because their messaging is supported by evidence-based research. The Washington Post left out important information that made it seem like I just disregarded the WHO's new guidelines and was being sponsored by the big soda industry. They forgot to mention that the WHO's assertion is based on low certainty evidence, which was my messaging from that previous video. And I'll drop a link where you can read more about it if that interests you. Also, I classified aspartame as possibly carcinogenic, which signifies limited evidence in humans, and it was categorized as a 2B carcinogen, which is the third lowest of four designations, placing it in the same risk category as aloe vera. JEFCA, a food safety agency, and is basically like the global equivalent of the FDA, conducted a comprehensive review assessing the risk to humans, and they concluded it is safe. Now, why is this messaging so important to me? As a dietitian, I focus on small, sustainable changes, and want to advocate its safety for those who need an alternative to regular sugar-sweetened beverages, or for those who have a medical condition and cannot consume sugar, or for those who are trying to lose weight and are seeking a low-calorie or sugar-free option. My goal wasn't to drive my audience to drink diet soda if that's not their preference, but I want to reassure them that it is safe if they choose to do so. The research is there, and I stand by my messaging. I am now aware that this messaging could have been presented as an organic post rather than a paid partnership. I will be more considerate of this in the future, and I completely understand the source of confusion and disappointment. My career, like thousands of other influencers, is to work with brand partners in a mutually beneficial manner that sometimes includes paid partnerships. I've never been paid by a brand without fully evaluating the product, messaging, and team. And unlike thousands of other influencers, I do work diligently to deliver proper knowledge and education. It is hard to determine who to trust in the media nowadays, but I want you guys to know that my values as a dietitian have not changed and I always stand by evidence-based research. And if you ever find yourself skeptical of these types of claims, it's essential to question everything and not just take someone else's word for it. I love that she went out of her way here to say that the American Beverage Association supports more than just soda. They support water-based products and juices and teas. And while that's true, American Beverage Association does support those things. Her trying to sort of like bait and switch in this moment, like her promoting aspartame had nothing to do with soda is just asinine to me because the American Beverage Association supports 
soda giants like Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. And there is absolutely no way a lobbying organization was paying her to promote aspartame in juices when Diet Coke is like the number two selling product worldwide. And then interestingly, at the end of this video, she appealed hard to her credentials as a dietitian, saying that she is out here trying to make it easy when there's millions of other influencers who are giving inaccurate information. What Steph seems to not realize here is that she is now part of the problem. She has allowed herself to be bought by a big food corporation to promote their products. So while she has those credentials and as she's appealing to them in this video, it really is just gonna throw people off. Her credentials, at least in my opinion, are now tainted because she gave in to be paid by one of these companies to promote a product that may or may not be safe. And she didn't do this in a genuine way where she broke down like the WHO research and talked about why it's low quality science. She just made a couple of assertions, but basically was reading a script. The same script that the other two, potentially like 15 online dietitians all read to their audiences. No one made that decision except for her. And she even went out of her way to tell us that she vetted them before she did this. And as frustrating as this whole thing is, you guys, I have to say honestly that I was not surprised. I'm curious to know if any of you were surprised, but I was not surprised. I feel like I have been waiting for a long time for the other shoe to drop because these online dietitians, they are always on some shit. And the way that they promote intuitive eating across the board to people who have had binge eating disorder and gained 300 pounds and have no intuition left in their body for intuitive eating to work has always been problematic to me, which is why I deemed them the health at every size thin influencers and told you guys how much I dislike them. But as I said, this thing is not new. We hear year over year um, from people online who have lost weight, from people online who are trying to lose weight, that the number one thing that really sort of stagnates them is just the sheer amount of information and research and data that exists about health and wellness. Every time a research article comes out saying something is bad, another one is right behind it, refuting those claims and saying, no, it's actually good for you. It makes it really, really difficult for people to know what the truth is, especially if you're not used to reading these studies for yourself. And as I mentioned, just the sheer amount of studies, like no one has time to sit down and read through every individual study that comes out. This is exactly how these big food brands stay in business. They don't care if aspartame is safe or not. All they want to do is throw their weight around in the ring and create just enough confusion about whether or not it is safe so that people will just give up and continue to buy that product and make them money. Because at the end of the day, all they care about is making money. I don't know how people haven't learned like from the cigarette companies. All they care about is making money. They don't care about your health. They don't care about your wellness. They do not care about you as a human being. They want to make money. That is their business. And as much as I always thought that this would happen and that this shoe would drop, I do actually hate seeing online dietitians so willing to accept money to be a part of the problem here and to create confusion for people who are just generally trying to do right by themselves and better their lives and better their relationship with food. Because that is what these influencers are claiming that they want for people, right? That's the whole existence of their platform is to bring people in and help them heal their relationship while they're taking money from corporations to do the exact opposite. And to them, I just want to know, how do you think you're part of the solution when you're allowing yourself to be paid to be part of the problem? It is something that doesn't make any sense to me and I can't wrap my head around it. 
But I did find something that helped me understand that this thing runs deep. Deeper than just a couple online um, influencers. These industries have been paying dietitians for a really long time. One of the more recent examples I found is that just last year in 2022, a group called U.S. Right to Know FOIA'd some information. And for those of you who don't know what a FOIA is, it means Freedom of Information Act. And it's a way that you can request transparency by requesting documents from government agencies. Well, they asked for some documents from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And what they found is that Nestle had paid the Academy at least $15 million. They also received money from PepsiCo, Hershey, Kellogg, General Mills, Conagra, and the National Dairy Council. This group also found that amongst the Academy's board members were current and former employees for companies like Monsanto, Sodexo, the Sugar Association, Bayer, and the International Food Council. And again, I found another article um, just letting me know that this isn't the first time that dietitians have had a misstep. Because back in 2015, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics put their stamp on Kraft Singles, promoting them as a healthy choice for kids to eat. In the face of blowback from critics pointing out that Kraft Singles have poor nutritional value and contain dyes and chemicals, they decided to rescind their stamp of approval. I find it so interesting that these companies are using influencers to promote their agendas. They evolve so rapidly because if you think about it, where do most people, especially young people, go nowadays when they're looking for health or diet or wellness sort of advice? We are beyond the days where we just Google what we're looking for. We are looking for people with actual experiences, people who we think relate to us. We go straight to the source, and that source is an influencer. And at a time when a majority of the U.S. population is overweight or obese, and looking online and to these influencers for health and wellness information, it makes sense that these companies would evolve so rapidly and begin to use these influencers to promote their products. But here's the crux of my issue. Here's what's bothering me like in the core of my soul with these dietitians is that they are taking advantage of their very vulnerable audiences in more than one way. And that is that in addition to people going online and looking for this health and wellness advice, where they're stumbling across these dietitians, there's this crop of health at every size dietitians, right? Like we saw with um, Cara Harbstreet. We have talked about um, Sammy from Find Food Freedom on the channel before. These health at every size intuitive eating counselor dietitians are just popping out of the woodwork. And many of them have told us that they have left their previous jobs either at hospitals um, or working for clinics to create their own private practices and to pursue doing TikTok full time, right? And I do think that's because it's very lucrative for them. They are being paid by these big companies to promote their junk food products and create this confusion online. And then the people who are caught up in this confusion that these dietitians are creating are hitting that point where they're like, F it, I'm just going to give up. Even worse, they might be at a point in their life where they're like, listen, I can't yo-yo diet anymore. Everything is too confusing. These fat acceptance points are really talking to me. And now we have these dietitians being paid by junk food companies while simultaneously promoting things like intuitive eating to people who are already overweight and have issues with food. Right? So they're getting paid by these companies, and then they're also charging people thousands of dollars to learn about intuitive eating when their intuition left about 400 pounds ago. <laughs> Do you see where the problem truly lies here? These dietitians are leaving their jobs at hospitals because this is so lucrative for them. 
They are literally just raking in money from every angle. And while that is just so icky, it is a perfect reminder and example that we should be extremely skeptical of the things that we're seeing and hearing online. Because another thing that stuck out to me as I was making this script is that um, the one dietitian, Steph, she again goes out of her way to appeal to her credentials a lot. I mean, to the point going as far as to tear down other influencers because they're just promoting things for money and clout. Looks like the apple doesn't fall too far from the influencer tree, does it, Steph? All right, that is all I have for you guys today on this topic. I'm curious to know, did you see this article? Had you seen these specific dietitians before? Have you seen other dietitians promoting aspartame or other unhealthy food to their audiences? And do you think that these three influencers are getting the heat that they deserve? You will have to let me know in the comment section below. And if you've made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you. But second of all, go ahead and leave me some sort of sugary drink emoji. Oh, just light up the comment section with some sodas or something. Thank you all so, so much for being here with me this week. I will see you in the next one. Bye.